Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, I'm answering a question here from the Mechanics M1 International A Level textbook from Pearson at Excel. A um, question from Chapter 4, which is about dynamics, and this is about connected particles and pulleys. It's question 3 from exercise 4F on page 74. Um, it tells us about two particles A and B, as shown in this diagram. <coughs> have masses, masses m kilograms and 3 kilograms respectively, where m is greater than 3. Basically meaning that when this is released, this is going to accelerate down because it's got a bigger mass. Okay, the, the, the weight on this side that a is, is going to be greater. So this is going to accelerate this way and that's going to accelerate that way. That's basically what they're trying to make you realize that m is greater than 3. The particles are connected by a light, inextensible string which passes over a smooth, fixed pulley. Initially, A is 2.5 meters above the horizontal ground. The particles are released from rest with the string taut and the hanging parts of the string vertical, as shown in the figure. After A has been descending for 1.25 seconds, it strikes the ground. Particle A... Okay, um... Uh, particle A reaches the ground before B has reached the pulley. Okay, so show that the acceleration of B as it ascends is 3.2 meters per second squared. So the acceleration of B and A have got the same magnitude. Opposite directions because B is going up and A is going down. But because they're connected by the same inextensible string, every part of it has the same acceleration in, in terms of its magnitude. So the acceleration of A and B are the same. So if I find the acceleration of A as it descends, that's the same acceleration of B as it ascends. Okay, so I'm going to find the acceleration of A. I can say acceleration of B. Let me just get comfortable with the pen here. Acceleration of B as it ascends is the same magnitude of the acceleration of A as it descends. Okay, so if we look at A, we, we've got some information about it. It has a constant acceleration. We know that the, we know the displacement. We know the time it took to descend, we know the initial velocity started at zero because it was released from rest. So we could use the SUVAT equations to find the acceleration. So if we think about what we have, SUVAT, and if I consider A and I'm taking down as positive for this first part of the question, then its displacement will be 2.5. Its initial velocity is zero. Its final velocity we don't know. The acceleration we know is uh, what we have to find, and the time it took is um, 1.25 seconds. So we have S, U, A, and T. Okay, so we can use the equation of motion S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared to find uh, the value of A. Okay, so S is 2.5. U is 0, so it's 0 times 1.25 plus a half times A times 1.25 squared. So this is going to give you 0. So you're going to have 2.5 multiplied by 2 divided by 1.25 squared. That'll give you acceleration. So therefore, the acceleration is equal to, let's put that in a calculator, 2.5 times 2, which is 5, divided by 1.25 squared. And that gives you 16 over 5, which is 3.2. Gives you 3.2 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration, okay, of B as it ascends and also the acceleration of A as it descends. So therefore, the acceleration of B is equal to 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's part A done. Now it's asking us to find the tension in the string as A descends. Okay, so now, the tension in the string is the same all the way through the, um, you know, the whole of the string. So the tension 
and the string is constant constant on both sides of the pulley both sides of the pulley because of the pulley because the pulley is smooth no friction okay so the, the tension in the string is the same whether you're talking about the tension in this part or the tension in this part so you have a tension and you have the weight this is 3g and this is t going this is up this is t up and this is mg so if we consider a we can't find the the the, the value of um the tension because there's two unknowns the tension and the mass but if you consider b we can find the tension because we have only one uh, we have only one known which is the tension we know the acceleration now so we're going to consider b if we consider the particle b okay which is this one we got the particle you've got 3g acting down and you've got tension acting up so we can say that by f equals ma okay the resultant force t minus 3g well actually this yeah it's going up t minus 3g we're taking up as positive because it's it's going upwards t minus 3g is equal to the mass which is 3 times acceleration which is and um, we just about found it 3.2 and we were actually told it anyway so t is equal to 9.6 plus 3 times 9.8 so the tension in the string is going to be given by uh, 9.6 plus 3 times 9.8 which gives you 39 okay 39 newtons is the tension in the string okay so there's part b b done and then for part c it says show that <laughs> m equals 65 over 11 so m is the mass of the uh, particle a so now we have to consider the particle a we know that its weight is mg we know the tension of the string now is the same on both sides so that's 39 and we know that this a is accelerating downwards with acceleration of 32 sorry 3.2 meters per second squared so we can again use f equals ma this time i'll take down as positive as it's accelerating downwards so i'll say mg minus 39 is equal to the mass which is m times acceleration which is 3.2 so if i rearrange this i'll have this is 9.8 okay um m um, minus 3.2 m equals 39 so 9.8 minus 3.2 is going to be 6.6 uh, .6. m equals 39 so m equals 39 divided by 6.6 .6. Okay, so let's work out what that is. It should give us the answer we learned. 39 divided by 6.6 .6 gives us 65 over 11. 65 over 11, and I think that's what we had to show you. Show that m equals 65 over 11. That's exactly what we've shown. Okay, so that's what m is. So that's part um, C done. And then, then it says part D. State how, have you, state how you have used information that the string is in, in, in extensible one mark so we can say the acceleration of a and b are the same are the same magnitude the accelerations of a and b have the same magnitude okay, that's how we've used it in our calculations okay that's part d done and now we're going to go on to part e which is on the next page Okay, it says when A strikes the ground, it does not rebound and the string becomes slack. Particle B then moves freely under gravity without reaching the pulley. If the string becomes taut again, okay, until the string becomes taut again. Find the time between the instant where A, when A strikes the ground and the instant when the string becomes taut again. So basically when B has risen 2.5 meters, when it's risen 2.5 meters, that's when A hits the ground. When A hits the ground, the string now becomes slack but b continues going upwards okay under just the acceleration due to gravity okay so it's going to decelerate because it's going upwards until it reaches instantaneous rest and then it's going to fall back down again and when it reaches back to the same level 2.5 meters above where it was before when it reaches that same level that's when the string is going to become taut again so if we consider b 
um, after A has hit the ground, as A hits the ground, okay, so the we can say that the, the speed of B, B, when, or you can say as A hits the ground, A hits the ground is equal to the speed of A at the same time. Okay, at the same time, same point. Okay, so find the speed of A as it hits the ground. So we're going to have SUVAT first. So A has fallen 2.5 meters. We're taking down as positive here. Okay, A has fallen 2.5 meters. Its initial speed was zero. Its final speed is what I want to find. The acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared. And the time was one point. What was the time it took? The time it took was 1.25 seconds. Okay, that's the time it took to fall to the ground. So we have, we're spoiled for choice here. We can use V equals U plus AT. And we know the acceleration is correct because they told us the acceleration in the question. It's not something that we calculated and we don't know that that's the value. They told us the value. So we can easily you know, use this and have no problem. So V equals U plus AT. So V equals U, which is zero, plus A, which is 3.2 times 1.25. So V is equal to 3.2 times 1.25. Oops, 1.25. That gives me four. So that's four meters per second. So that's the speed of A as it hits the ground. Okay. So therefore, we can say the, sp the speed of B as the string becomes slack, as the string first becomes slack, is going to be the same speed is equal to 4 meters per second. So if we consider this is B, okay, it goes up, reaches instantaneous rest, and comes down again. Okay, so we can say that, let's say this is the time when it's, it's, its initial speed now is 4 meters per second, and its final speed when it comes back down again is going to be negative 4 meters per second. The acceleration is due to gravity acting downwards, okay, and um, what else do we know? Okay, we know that the mass of B, we know that M was equal to, as we said here, it's 65 over 11, so the mass of B is 65 over 11, um, no, no, actually the mass of B is um, 3, 3 kilograms, okay, 3 kilograms, so that's 3G. Okay, so that's 3G acting down. There's no, no tension in the string because the string is slack at this time. Okay, so it's slack and then it comes up and it comes down again and then it becomes taut after this point. Okay, so we know the mass is 3 uh, kilograms. So what we can say here is if we consider SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T, I'm considering the... Um, situation that it's gone up and we started from here so this is like our starting point and it's come back to the same level again that's when the string is going to become taut again so the displacement between this point and when it comes back down to this point is zero displacement remember is not the distance that it's traveled it's this displacement from its position now we're taking the original position now as the point where the string became slack so therefore the displacement is going to be zero because it's going to become taut at the same point when it became as it became slack as it comes down once it comes down to this level again, then it's, the string is going to become taut and it's going to be coming down and it will pull up on B. Um, the initial speed, it was 4 meters per second. The final speed is minus 4 meters per second because it's going down on the way down. This is on the way up. The acceleration is, um, we're taking um, up as positive because that's how it started. So the acceleration, okay, is now negative G. There's no tension in the string, so it's not 3.2 anymore. Okay, tension in the string is gone, so the acceleration is just only due to gravity, which acts downwards. And the time, we don't know. And time, I think, is... What do we have to find here? I forgot what we have to find. Find the time, yeah. Okay, so we've got to find the time it took for this to go up there, back down here again. So that's what we have to find. Okay, so we have S. We have everything, actually. S, we have all of those. So we could use V equals U plus AT, and that will give us our answer. So we have minus 4 equals 4 plus 
a which is minus 9.8 times t so we're going to have minus 8 equals 9.8 times t so we can say t is equal to t is equal to negative 8 divided by negative 9.8 so t is equal to negative 8 divided by negative 9.8 it's going to be positive of course whoops I put the answer there as well sorry 8 divided by 9.8 Neg negatives will cancel out that gives you 40 over 49 which if you round it to 3 sf gives you 0 0.816 seconds 0 0.816 seconds you can also write the answer as 0 0.82 seconds both of these are acceptable you can also write it as this if you want but there's the answer you can write it to 2 sf because we've used g you can write it to 3 sf if you want that's also acceptable and you can write it in this exact value 40 over 49 that's also acceptable. Okay, so there's the answer to part um, E, and that's the end of this question. Okay, so in this last question, we ha actually were able to use um, any equation. If you didn't realize that the velocity on the way down at the same level will be the same as the velocity on the way up, okay, because it's under the same acceleration of G, what we could do is, if you didn't know that this was minus 4, we, could, we had S, U, A, and T. We could have used S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared, and found the value of T which would have been more hassle, but um, it's still acceptable, okay? So that's, that's perfectly fine. It would give you the same answer. So there's the answer for qu uh, this question number three from exercise 4F from the M1 book. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of the textbook, M1 textbook, can be found in this playlist that should appear over here. So as I'm asked questions from this chapter, chapter four, I will collect them together in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from this topic of dynamics on chapter four, and I'll, I'll actually, connect, I'll actually um, collect this under connected particles, will be in this playlist over here. And you can click on this link here to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.